Welcome back to our workshop. The project I've got in front of me today is restoring a vintage tea cart. This is something that's got a number of problems with it. The wheels coming apart and the rubber is disintegrating on the tire. And the rubber on these small casters has just fallen off. There's a lot of restoration work to do on this tea cart. So stick with me, I'll show you how it's done. As a furniture repair business, we're opening the doors to our workshop to show you the tools and techniques to repair furniture. What I need to do is take that apart, repair it, and put it back together so I can get this chair in working order. We give you tips to make your repair projects easier. Let's get into the workshop and start fixing furniture. So where do you start a restoration project like this? The first thing I do is I label all the parts and take it apart. That way I can give special attention to all the different pieces that need restoration work. So here we've got some rubber that's disintegrated on the wheel and there's also at least one loose joint. So I'm going to take the old rubber off and see what type of repairs are needed to these wheels. I'm going to take this rubber off. There's a channel that runs through here and there's a piece of metal that's holding the rubber on. So I just need to get access to that and then I can clip it off. You can see how brittle this is. It's really just crumbling away. So I'll just get a little bit of a channel in here. And then get my side cutters in there. Okay, so with the rubber off, let me see what's going on with the wheel here. So this loose joint here, oh, it looks like there's a tenon here that's loose. So we'll see if I can pop this apart and then we can glue it back together again. Like everything else, I'm just going to stick some labels on the inside, make sure I can label these parts. I'm not sure how much this is going to come apart, but better safe than sorry. It'll just take a minute to label everything. Okay, and then we'll get out a spreader clamp to gently coax these parts apart from each other. So this is where I've got the loose joint. I know that that one's loose. So I'm gonna see if either of these are loose. Oh, you can see here this one is as well. I grab another spreader clamp and put it the opposite direction and see if I can coax these pieces apart. Okay, so the two pieces over here are staying connected. This one's coming apart. So if I just continue to put pressure on them, I should be able to pull this out. There we go. Now that I have these apart, I can see that these are put together with a spline. What that is, is a slot cut in both pieces of wood and then a thin piece of wood added in between them. And it's a good way to reinforce a joint. It looks like the splines were put in first and then this groove was cut out afterwards to accept the rubber tire. There are some more loose pieces here, so I've got a little more to take apart. Down on this joint here, I see just a hairline of a crack. So what I'm going to do is use the spokes to give me a little bit of purchase to see if I can spread these apart. It is opening up. I just want to be careful. I'm not going to break it. You can see here at the inside of the wheel it's coming apart, at the outside it's not. So what I'm going to do is put wedges in here and I'll close up that joint and that should help pull it apart. So that's opened up the bottom here. I just need to get a wider wedge here, insert it again, and it should pull it apart.
Okay, so that piece is off, and let's see. It looks like some of these might be loose as well. So I'll go through the same process separating this joint, get all the pieces apart, and then I can glue them back together again. Well, not everything goes to plan. This part here is loose, and this part here is loose, but this is secure. So instead of trying to take this apart and potentially damage it, what I'm going to do is open up the joints as much as I can, insert glue, and then clamp them shut. Now, inserting glue in joints like this isn't ideal. It's not the best way to glue something up. But given that this is a wheel and that all these pieces are going to be held together and there's going to be rubber all around it, I'm not concerned about the structure of these. So injecting glue here I think is a good compromise compared to spending the effort and time to pull this apart and potentially break something and then put it back together again. These tenons don't have any glue residue on them and they're just a little bit on the end. So they weren't glued well and that's why they've come apart. So I'll put high glue on both sides as I put everything back together again. Clamping a circle like this when gluing it up can be difficult, but I've got these rubber bands and what I do is tie a couple of knots in them so that I can stretch them out properly. So this is my one end, it's just a loop. And then what I'll do is put that around the wheel. And then what I want to do is put another loop in it. So I'm going to put one back here. And this will make sense in a minute. Okay, so I now have two loops. And what I'll do is take the excess of this, run it through this loop here. And then what I'm going to do is pull it back on itself. And what this does is allows me to put tension on it. And then as I feed it back through this one, pull it back again, it allows for even more tension. So this rubber band doesn't slide very well. So what I need to do is just sort of coax it through each band and start providing tension on the wheel. So there's one. This is similar to using cotton rope to tie things down in a vehicle. If you put a couple of um, loops in it like this, you end up creating a lot more tension than you can just by pulling it yourself. So this gives me tension around the wheel, 
but I've got a spot here and here that are slightly open, so I need this to come together in these joints here and here. So I'll take a clamp and put it across this section and just pull those parts together. There, nice and tightened up. That's one repaired wheel, I've got one more to go. I'd like to ask you if you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up, that helps other people find our videos. Now for this other wheel, the tire is really deteriorated. Let me give you a close up. You can see this rubber is so bad, there's actually pieces missing from it. We'll get this fixed up, looking as good as new. Next I'm going to work on the small tires. So these caster wheels here are just two pieces of metal together. And this is an old piece of the rubber. It's rock hard. So what I'm going to do is put new rubber on these. And they're a little challenging to work on unless I put them in the vise. The replacement rubber is 3 8 the same diameter as this. And what I need to do is cut it and glue it with CA glue. Now there are different viscosities. What you're looking for is the thin or what is normal for CA glue. The process for putting rubber on the caster wheels is different than the large wheels. I'll show you that process after. But essentially what I'm looking to do here is make sure I've got a nice seating in the wheel. And then what I'm doing is measuring the length of where I want to cut this off. So I'm going to cut it a little bit long to begin with, and then I'll trim it shorter. So here's my mark right here. And I'm just going to saw through this with a knife. So that gives me a nice straight edge, but that's not exactly what I'm looking for on this wheel. Now when I take the rubber and wrap it around the wheel, you'll see here that when I try to put the two pieces together, I end up with a bit of a gap. So what I like to do is trim it at just a slight angle so that I can get those pieces meeting up nice and I can get a nice tight fit. I can actually jam these together if I really push it, but that's putting a lot of strain on the parts. So my preference is to trim it just on a slight angle. So I need to take a little bit of length off as well. So a little bit of an angle, a little bit of a trim. Give it a try. So let's see what the fit's like. I'm going to stretch it in there, make sure it's well seated, and then bring those two parts together. So it's taking a bit of pressure to do it. Let me just try and stretch that a little bit more. So it's a bit of a balancing act. If I make it too pointed, when this wheel rotates, there's going to be a bit of a bump there. So if you can see there, if I squeeze it in there, I've got a nice tight fit. I'm now ready to glue this together, but you need to make sure you're wearing gloves when you do this. When using CA glue, it's too high of a risk to actually stick your skin together. And no matter how careful I am, I've actually done it once. It's not fun. If you do, Nail polish remover will take your skin apart. So the process here is pretty straightforward. You're just putting CA glue on the end and you want to create a little bit of a puddle, but if you get too much, it's going to be messy. So I've actually got a little bit too much there. I'm just going to take an extra glove I've got to take that off. And then quickly wrap this around here and get it in place. and hold it. I hold it about 30 seconds and then it's permanently bonded. There's a joint up close and a little bit of my glove. So we'll take off the excess glue with some steel wool. Well I'm glad it was my glove stuck to this and not my finger. You've only got seconds to line this up so it's really critical in terms of making sure that you've got that exactly where you want it so that when it bonds it's in the right spot. Otherwise you're gonna have to cut it off and try it all over again. Let's get this cleaned up and we'll see what it looks like and we'll move on to the next one. As I move the tire here in the light you can see there's a bit of a gloss and that's from the CA glue. So to clean that off and my glove 
use 4 aught steel wool. So this is super fine steel wool. And what that'll do is degloss that edge. And get rid of my glove. There's just the slightest of a crown where I join that. So we'll take this off and see how it rolls. Yep, it's fine. So we're good to go there. That's one done. I'll do the other one. Now the process for doing the larger wheels is actually a little bit easier than this. And I'll show you that once I get this assembled. I'm not going to screw this on yet because the clamps are in the way here. It has to get set back. But this just gives me somewhere to work on the, the wheels. So it's the same 3 8 inch rubber that we used here. And all I need to do is run that around the wheel, make sure it's seated so that I'm getting an accurate measurement. So now configure the length right about here and we're good to go. So I'll just get my knife lined up in that mark and then cut it square. So now I can lay this on the wheel and double check the measurement. You can see there's a slight gap. I cut it too short, but there's enough give here that I can actually push that together and still have some space. Now what I can do is take this off and glue it together. Because there's enough stretch in here, I can actually stretch this on afterwards. That's why it's so much easier than working on these casters. I do have a few touch-ups on the wood here I'm going to do before I put that on there. And furniture repairs can be confusing. I produce these videos to help you understand furniture repairs. But if you're interested in some one-on-one -on -one coaching, I do that via Zoom. You can follow the link in the video description and I'll put a link up here as well. So that's certainly bonded, but I would leave it for a little while before actually trying to stretch it. So I'm going to work here on the touch-ups I need to do on the wood. It's going to be easier to do before I put the rubber on, and then we can layer on the rubber, and we're good with the wheels. You can see a test I've done with stain markers on a video. I'll put a link in the video description. The rubber tire is ready to go on, so now I just set it inside the depression in the wheel and work it around to stretch it in place. This has been clamped up long enough for the glue, so I can take this off and install the axle. I'll put the screws in here and then we'll check out the wheels. I only use a screwdriver in a situation like this to make sure I don't drive the screw too deep and go through the wood below. You can see there's a lot of wobble here in this wheel and when I spin it, it sort of rattles. So I'll need to pop off the hubcap here. Oh, it's actually quite loose. It looks like one nail isn't holding. Someone might have already taken this off. Inside here, it's a large screw. This is a Robertson square head. Now in Canada, we're used to these. This is a standard screw for us, but that screw head looks really large. These are my Robertson screwdrivers, and these are also known as square drives. The red is the most common. It's used for a number eight or a 10 screw. A number eight is a normal woodworking screw. The green is for a number six, so more cabinet hardware, and the black I rarely ever use. So I'm gonna see if I can use my slotted screwdriver to go across the angle of the corner and tighten that screw. Now this isn't an ideal solution. I've just looked it up because this puzzles me. There's actually a brown Robertson. I've never heard of it before, but obviously I need to buy one. But now that I turn it, it's not too bad. Just one spot. 
Maybe what I should do is take this off and wax it. That's one large screw. And it's interesting. Look at the tip here. This screw doesn't actually have a pointed tip on it. If I turn this around, look at that. I have never seen something like this before. I wonder if this might be a handmade screw. If you know something about this style of screw, I'd love to hear about it. That's an impressive piece of hardware. So I'll get this waxed up and that should solve the problem of getting this wheel operating really nice and smooth. I'll also put some wax on this portion here. The wax is dried so I'm just buffing it up now and you can see there's a bit of a shine if I put the cloth here a bit of a shine on that surface so that should be nice and smooth for that wheel to turn well. Let's give it a try. I'm not able to get it perfect but it certainly got a lot less play than it did before. So with that, I'll put the hubcap back on. This hubcap goes on with just some nails, and you can see here a piece is splintered out before. So I'm just going to rotate this on this angle to get the nails put in, or I'm going to have something to nail it to. Just make sure that's in the center and then tap it in. I'm using a tack hammer and upholstery hammer just because it's such a fine nail here. I use my nail set so infrequently I misplaced it so I'm just going to use a square cut nail it's got a good end to it to tap these home. I'll now do the same thing on this side, get rid of that wobble. Once I do that, I'll take this off of the workbench and bring in the top where I'm going to sand it down, flatten it out, put a new coat of finish on, and then rub it out nice and smooth. There's some damage to the finish on the top here, and on the wings, there's an alligator type texture on the finish. You can see there are some smooth sections here, but most of it has this alligator type of texture. So this is something I'm going to have to repair.